Hello, dear listeners. Welcome to Women and Shakespeare. I'm your host, Dr. Varsha Bantwani. I have been drawn to the work of our podcast guest, Professor Alexa Alice Jugo. I want to ask you about uh, your engagement with generative AI or artificial intelligence. So you have given several high-profile public presentations on this, uh, especially at your keynote at Hong Kong Baptist University. So I want to know why should we think about artificial intelligence and Shakespeare together? One of the projects I'm working on involves a case of audience members bring an AI app on their phones to attend a Shakespeare production. But first, let me just say a little bit about generative AI. It's a term that applies mostly right now to machine learning pr programs that are coded to produce text that look new, but actually it's a version of the data set they trained on. People often say it can write new text, but in fact, there's nothing new. It's entirely based on the data sets. And so you could feed it the Shakespearean canon and ask it to, you know, take it for a spin like a juice mixer and give us something, quote unquote, Shakespearean. In any case, we live in an inquiry-driven society right now meaning that a lot of uh, our life, research, teaching, and learning are filtered through algorithms. We engage in search activities every day from Google Map to research inquiries, and, and AI is playing a huge role in this. Artists, they do jump on the bandwagon. So that's the story I'm telling you now. This play is called All the Worlds a Screen whose title nods to Jayquiz's speech in As You Like It and alludes to Spring's world-making capacities. It was staged in Ireland in 2022 and 23. It was meant to promote culture exchange among deaf, hard of hearing and hearing individuals. So that's an Irish sign language production. And audiences who don't know L would end their phone during the production to obtain live captioning, and that's driven by an AI. The actors performed snippets from As You Like It, Hamlet, Macbeth, Romeo and Juliet, and Sonnet 18. So strikingly, the organizers envisioned the AI app as humans' companions, as a machine guest, they say, that you bring to the production and has fundamentally changed how we understand theatrical publics because there are machine guests in the mix right now. Another striking example is Annie Dorsen, who calls herself an algorithmic theater artist. She used AI in her Shakespeare productions, notably in this work called A Piece of Work. The production juxtaposed a live actor's performance with a godlike presence of AI-driven voice reciting randomly sequenced lines from Hamlet. Now, we know that Hamlet is a play traditionally understood to be an exploration of interiority and inner life. The title riffed on Hamlet's phrase, what a piece of work is a man, and alludes to the idea that AI-generated texts may have unpleasant character flaws and that part of the production was manufactured by a machine. So all of these works that I mentioned, they're kind of creatively using AI to prompt people to reflect more algorithms around us. Algorithms are largely invisible. That's the point, right? But they are always there. Now, with high quality prompts, the outputs by generative AI simulate human speech. And I think it has huge implication in the field of Shakespeare study. The AI is coded to produce synthesis or anonymize public voices. That's my view. And so this AI is a ghost. It's a, it's a ghost of the public. But it's also, it's also a shadow public. I think of King Lear as a Shakespearean. You know, King Lear famously asked, who is it that can tell me who I am when he's angry, driven out the door by his daughters? Now, the foe answers wittily. 
Lear's shadow. When we interact with AI, we're not interacting with God or a machine, we're interacting with ourselves. We are Team Lear, right? The AI is our shadow. We are reminded of versions of ourselves when using AI to generate text. Uh, we need to remember the performative nature of the AI output. So I have been teaching with AI rather than against AI to highlight all of these aspects and look at it as an impromptu performance machine. And I hope going forward, all of us can think more about what writing is, the nature of words, 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 as Hamlet says, and how we can use AI more appropriately if we understand now that it is in fact not generating new information. Oh, uh, the idea of AI as our companions and shadow selves, which they of course are, but again, kind of the act of critically thinking about them is really, really important. Thank you. That would Alexa. Alice Shugo. Dear listeners, adieu, adieu, adieu. But remember to tune in to Women and Shakespeare, streaming at Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and numerous other platforms. If you want to listen to the podcast with a full transcript, head over to our website, www.womenandshakespeare.com. Until then, keep smashing the patriarchy. 